In this video, I want to offer an arena programming tip for a situation which you might encounter in many different types of models where you have two processes in serial where one process might be a lot slower than the process upstream from it. For example, if you're modeling an airport, you might have a metal detector here, and you might have document checkers here. Document checker is relatively quick, the metal detector is slow. So, you may have entities that queue up at the metal detector, and not a lot of entities that queue up at the document checker if we're just going by the service time for the document checker. But we know in real life, people do queue up at the document checker because the document checker will actually stop checking documents when the queue for the metal detector gets sufficiently long. In other words, the geometry of physical space puts a limit on how many people can queue up at the metal detector, and that then causes people to queue up in front of the document checker instead. Similarly, if you were at a fast food restaurant, you might imagine multiple stations, either one station that takes an order and another station which maybe customizes uh, the food, uh, or if you have multiple stations responsible for making the food, you might have some processes which are faster than others. Although people can get through one process faster than another, there's just not physically space in the line to shove people in between the two stations. And so even though this station finishes much earlier than this station, people still have to queue up at this station because this station can't take on any more customers until this queue is cleared. Now, it may not matter to you where an entity queues up, just so long as they queue up for the same amount of time as they do in the real system. But when we want to validate these systems, or when we simply want to make an argument about, say, bottlenecks in our systems, it's really nice if our entities can queue up in the same locations that they do in the real systems. If I run this as it is, so right now I have a create block which creates about one entity every half a minute, it goes through a very fast uh, process here that grabs resource one, one unit of resource one, and it only stays there for um, the most likely time. So the mode here is just one second on that distribution. And then on process two, it grabs one unit of resource two, but it stays here much longer. So the distribution here is a mode of one minute. And so if I hit play here, then what I see, and this has been slowed down, is that entities show up, they pass very quickly through process one, uh, they may get stuck here in process two, and so we're going to start seeing queuing at process two. So uh, these queues may start out and maybe not get that long, but over time uh, this queue might get longer and longer, as I think we'll see just here in a second. Arena in the simulation will allow this queue to get as long as it can count. So if you're in the student version, you could get 149 entities queued up in here. If you were in the commercial version, you could get nearly infinite amount of entities queued up in between this process and this process. Although that is not very realistic if we're thinking about the physical system and all the geometric constraints on the physical system. If we're thinking about the physical system, we probably want to set a threshold and say there realistically can't be more than, say, five people in line at process two at a time. And so when, um, so when this queue gets to a particular length, then we are going to turn off processing at process one and have the entities queue up waiting in front of process one until process two uh, reduces its queue. So how can we do that? Now, of course, there are multiple ways to do these things um, in any programming language, but today I'm going to make use of the hold module, which is a module you can find in the advanced process menu. Hold is often used in batching when you want to say, for example, uh, have an entity's wait uh, until enough entities are available to move on as a batch. Now there also are batching modules specifically for that. There are other times you might use holds. For example, if you're simulating a traffic intersection, you might use a hold to simulate when one direction of traffic is getting a red light while the other direction is getting a green light. 
So hold and then other uh, things like signal that kind of match with it can be very useful tools for uh, adjusting these flows of entities through your system. I'm going to keep the, the things pretty relatively simple in this model. So I'm just going to move the processes over in order to make some room. And I'm going to delete this wire in between create and the first process. And then I'm going to pull the hold up in between. The hold looks just like a process. It even uh, draws a queue over top of it, similar to a, a process with a C's in it. And then I'm going to wire this one up. The queue you can see over the top of the hold is a slightly different color than the queue over top of uh, the process. So the hold itself does not have a service time like the processes do. It just uh, adds a wait time. So let's go in and configure the hold. By default, it's wait for signal. We're not going to cover signals in this video. I'm going to change it to scan for condition, and that opens up this condition here. I'm going to leave the queue type as Q, and I'm going to leave the queue name as basically the name of the hold.q. So leave all that in default, and we just need to now change the condition. If you're having trouble remembering any of the Saman or Arena syntax, make use of build expression. It's really helpful uh, when you don't quite remember all of the uh, all of the different uh, syntax and funny little shortened names that Saman uses for what um, might otherwise be um, very useful uh, tools if you could just remember their names. So if I look under the expression builder under basic process variables, I've got these things entity process queue and resource. If I click on queue, I can see that um, I can get the current number in the queue. And so I can actually build a condition based on the current number of entities in the process to queue. So what I'm building here is a condition which defines when entities are allowed to pass through the hold module. And I know that I, let's say, I want the entities to pass through when the number of entities in the process to queue is less than or equal to four. So let's say I know that at most I can fit five entities into this queue. So I'm not going to let the next one pass by unless there are four or less in this queue. Now, I need to add one more condition here. So I'm going to do an AND. I need to do that because I'm effectively making this hold take the place of this queue here. So we know that this queue happens when an entity shows up to this process and the resource associated with this process is busy. So if I want to simulate that behavior, putting, making this queue here serve as the queue for process 1 and also the queue for process 2 when process 2 is sufficiently overloaded, then I need to involve process 1 in this condition. And so uh, there's a couple things I could do. I can go to the resource, and I can go to state, and I can say, all right, when the current state of the resource associated with process 1, which is resource 1, when that is equals, so I'll just use the double equals here, and then they've got this thing that says idle state constant. And if I put that there, then what this says is let them pass through the hold when the second queue is sufficiently small, less than or equal to four entities, and the first resource is idle. This is a totally fine way to implement this for this particular uh, toy model. But if I want to make this more general, then I can base this not on the state of uh, this resource, but I can actually base it on its usage. So. Another way to say the exact same thing that I did here, but allow me to generalize it to resources that have more than one capacity, is to say, I want to know if the current number busy in resource one is less than or equal to the current number scheduled for resource one. So if resource one had a capacity of five, then this would return a five. And if there's only one of those five being used, then this would return a one. And that would mean that there would be four idle units of the resource available. So this is equivalent to saying 
that there is an idle resource available, an idle unit of this resource available. And so that is, uh, should be enough. So now if I go back here and I click on play, I should see entities be created just like before. And because this was seeded with the same random number generator, I actually will see the same entity arrivals as I saw before. So we should see the same sort of pattern here. But something interesting should happen. This sometimes will pop up to five, but once this gets to five, it doesn't ever get any longer. And instead, you see queuing happen here. And actually, it looks like I may have made a slight mistake in the condition. I think I may have accidentally made this a less than or equal to. This should have just been a strict less than. So the second one here said, you know, it should be only when uh, process one or resource one is idle, and that's a strictly less than. So the number of resources being used is strictly less than the number of resources scheduled. That is the idle condition. So if I rerun it now, and I guess I can maybe speed this up a little bit, then now I should see that there is never a case that anyone is waiting in this queue, and there is never a case that this queue is larger than five, and all of the rest that used to be queuing up here is now queuing up over here. And that is much more realistic. This looks much more like what you'd see at a real airport, where the metal detector queue has a limited uh, length and uh, the queue in front of the document checker gets very long. It's the same thing in sort of a fast food restaurant, etc. Now, of course, you can add other effects like bulking and, and other things like that. And you can imagine building conditions uh, based on queue lengths to implement bulking. I'll leave that for another time. For now, that's how you can use a hold module to sort of uh, allow yourself to build a queue which serves both as a queue for one process and sort of an overflow view queue for another process.